Hi there, I'm Daniel Leltuk, head of cello at Tone Bass. In this video, you're going to see five esteemed cellists explore one of the most important topics in all of cello playing, shifting. That is, how to get our left hand to move up and down the fingerboard. The artists you'll see in this video include Sarah Santambrojo, Richard Aaron, Daniel Lelchuk, Eric Kim, and Camden Shaw. Now keep in mind, all of these little excerpts are from large courses on the Tone Bass platform. So if you like what you see, you can subscribe to Tone Bass Cello, see the courses in their entirety. Meanwhile, have fun as you work your way up and down the fingerboard. When you're sliding, the cleanest way to slide is on the new bow. Um, if you slide on the last bow, which in certain super, super, super romantic music, I will do it very, very occasionally for an effect. But otherwise, it ends up sounding super slurpy. So like in Chikasu Rokoko, so I'm gonna slide on the down bow. So if I do it on the up bow, the, the old bow, it, oh, yeah, it's just so horrible. It's absolutely horrible. It's just so vulgar and it sounds dirty and it's, it's just, it doesn't work. But that's something you have to really think about. And that's a nice downward slide. Downward slides are fantastically effective in romantic music and I think not used enough. You don't want to use it too much. Everything in, in you know, balance, but... So there, I just did three different types of slides, all romantic, in the space of a bar and a half. But since they, each one was different, it just seems super exciting and passionate, instead of, well, it's getting really slurpy. Now, I'm shifting slowly on purpose. Because again, I want to illustrate the importance of slow shifts to teach the left hand the geography of the cello, as Mr. Starker called it. I altered the bowings here for a specific purpose. Because when we make the big shift on the same bow, we can hear the tone and the sound much more than if we have a bow change at the same time. So this way I can practice the down shift quite easily because it's on the same bow, so I can hear it all the way from G down to C. A down to D. B down to E. Once we get those shifts really in our ear and in our hand, we can begin to put things together. So the first thing about shifting one has to really work on is the balance of the hand. As I said before, there are two ways of putting a finger down. There's pivoting and there's digitizing. So if you do it like a digit or you pivot, that's very important so that when you play a passage, you play it like a pivot and then you play it with your digit of your fingers. The difference is usually the uh, by balancing the hand and by pivoting, usually it's easier to keep the vibrato going. Uh, digitizing is just very fast passages. So when you shift, let's say from four to one, you always want to balance the direction of the finger, the note you're going. So for instance, in the first drawing on the top, you're your, where the black line is your fourth finger, but now I want to put my weight in my first finger and then shift. I don't want to shift with the weight in my fourth finger and then first finger. It shouldn't look like this. It should always look balanced back to the finger you're going to go to and then fall. If, if I'm going to go back to my fourth finger, I shift my weight forward to the four, I go back. I shift my weight back to go forward. 
so that you consciously want to feel the balance of the hand before you shift. So if I'm here, I tap my first finger, I tap my fourth finger, balance back, balance forward, balance back, balance forward. So when you do scales, I balance back to go forward, I balance back to go back, I balance back to my first finger. So I'm always balancing the hand in the direction of the note I'm going to. That's an incredibly important concept. One major, major obstacle. That shift to the F, that's the kiss of death for a lot of people. And unfortunately, it happens several times throughout the excerpt. So if you find yourself inconsistent with it, make that your number one priority. And then I've talked several times now, if you watch any of the other excerpts, uh, about shifting in and the process of how to shift. In that demonstration, I shifted on the, the old finger. But if you did it on the new, it's a lot harder to feel that shift unless you really feel that, that release very quickly. So again, if you're feeling very, very light, then that's probably okay. But if you're that might feel a little bit more consistent for you, especially under a uh, pressure situation. You can weirdly do this exercise is a little embarrassing, but if you hold your, keep your thumb in the same position and keep your vibrato going and just do something like this, it kind of sounds like a ghost. Um, it's a great tool to have in your toolkit for something really, really emotional like that where you feel like it's crying, that sort of sound. So then we have the, the third and final phrase lit, which is, which is really, really powerful. <laughs> so the third one. So you can hear now almost entirely this phrase is pain. Where it started out, this, this movement was almost entirely beauty and, and comforting sounds. Now it's like, 90% angst, which is a pretty dramatic change. You'll notice I add another one of those slides up here. And this one, ouch. What an amazing neighbor note that is, where you feel this kind of dark power and like, I don't even know if we're evil or good at that point, right? But we have a chance of redemption. very perfumey with that, that chord that we have in the piano. 